With the P60, P90 and more recently the G90T, MediaTek has come a long way towards changing our perception of their chips. What they have lacked though is a proper flagship offering. Well, enter the Diamond City 1000. So how good is this new flagship chip from MediaTek and how does it compare with Qualcomm's latest Snapdragon 865? Well, let's find out in this video. Hey guys, Sash here from C4E Tech and if you do end up liking what you see here, please consider turning on notifications by hitting that bell icon. Let's now get this video started. So guys, before we start, a little bit of a disclaimer. I've kept my voice a little low for this video uh, because uh, my throat's still not really good. But uh, I've read in the comments that a few of you felt it was cracking. So I've kind of kept my voice levels a little low so that it doesn't crack as much. So let me know how uh, the audio turned out in the comments. So let's jump to the video. So what makes the MediaTek Diamond City 1000 so special? Well, it marks MediaTek's return to making flagship chips again. Their last attempt, the Helio X series, it did not go too well. But with the new 5G powered Dimensity series, MediaTek is looking to make a comeback on the back of a very successful P60, P70, P90, the G90T. I think the timing, they've got it right. Now, when it comes to 5G, MediaTek and Qualcomm, they've chosen two very different methods of implementing it on their flagship chips. Now the Dimensity 1000, it comes with an integrated 5G modem, while the X55 5G modem for the Snapdragon 865, it's an add-on unit. So what's the difference and why does that even matter? Well, the difference here is that integrated modems, they consume lesser battery. And in fact, MediaTek claims that their new modem here, the design that they're using rather, it consumes 49% lesser power than the competition. Qualcomm, on the other hand, they say they went with a separate modem module to give manufacturers an option. 5G, as we all know, it isn't available everywhere. So Qualcomm's basically saying if a brand wants to sell a 865 phone in a market where there is no 5G or very little 5G adoption, they can choose to actually sell a 4G version of an 865 phone. They can save some money by not going with a 5G modem. Uh, that kind of makes sense, right? So pros and cons for both. Now moving on, there is another important aspect of 5G. Now that's compatibility. Right now, there are two main types of 5G technology being rolled out. Each, again, has its own set of pros and cons. First, we have millimeter wave, which can support high speeds, but the range is weak and it can easily get blocked by any obstacles in its path. The second tech is sub six, uh, six gigahertz. The speeds here are lower comparatively, but the signal strength, it's better. It's kind of like the choice we have to make between 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz Wi-Fi bands. So the X55 modem on the Snapdragon 865, it supports both millimeter wave and sub six gigahertz. Now this is why the theoretical speeds on it, they're way higher, around 7.5 gigabit per second. Uh, for down and 3 Gbps for up. The Dimensity 1000, it doesn't support a millimeter wave. So in a market like the United States, where millimeter wave is the 5G tech that's being adopted, phones with uh, the Dimensity 1000 chip, they still will not get 5G. Now that said, millimeter wave is pretty expensive and problematic. So in most markets, sub six gigahertz adoption might end up being higher. So the Diamond City 1000, you know, it's gonna be enough. Okay, enough about 5G. Let's now talk about performance. Both these chips are pretty similar when we talk about the specs inside. Uh, they both have four high-powered Cortex-A77 coupled with four power-efficient Cortex-A55 cores. The combinations are a little different. It's pretty straightforward with the Diamond City 1000, whereas with the 865, it has uh, A77 and A55 cores, but they are, I mean, it's actually cryo cores that, that are built, uh, that are customized versions of the A77 and A55. So here we get one higher clocked A77 based cryo 585 gold, three lower clocked A77 based cryo 585 gold, and four power efficient cryo 8, I mean 585 uh, silvers based on the A55. 
As you can see, comparing the clock speeds, MediaTek has the higher clock speeds on 7 out of the 8 cores. But despite that, the leaked Geekbench scores seem to indicate that the 865, it's gonna be more powerful overall. Even with a compound benchmark like Antutu, the Dimensity 1000, as of now, it holds the crown. It has the highest score, but we've already seen even phones with 855 Plus come pretty close to the 500K mark. Qualcomm claims the new 865 chip is gonna be 25% better with regards to performance when compared to last gen 855. So the 865, it should top compound benchmarks too. Talking about compound benchmarks, let's talk GPU. MediaTek's Mali GPUs have always seemed to be behind their Adreno counterparts and that doesn't seem to change this time either. But, yes, there is a but. The difference here might not mean much to the end consumer. MediaTek has shown that their Mali G77 MP9 is about 11 to 15% faster than the Adreno 640, which is on the Snapdragon 855 chip. And that is with regards to certain benchmark. Given that the current generation 855 is able to handle pretty much any game with ease, I guess the Dimensity 1000 shouldn't have any trouble with games. By the way, we even have support for 120Hz refresh rate panels at Full HD+, and 90Hz panels at Quad HD+, resolutions. Now, the 865 is most definitely ahead. For example, the 865 has support for up to 144Hz refresh rates, and that's for Quad HD+, panels. The Adreno 650 is said to be about 25% more powerful than the 640, so it should easily outperform the Mali GPU on the Dimensity 1000. And it's not just numbers and performance either. Qualcomm has a few more tricks up their sleeves when it comes to the new GPUs. All their chips can now receive graphic driver updates directly from the Play Store. They claim that the 650 is not just more powerful, it also has 35% lower power consumption from the 640. We also get Adreno HDR Fast Blend, which should basically help make HDR gameplay a lot smoother. Now, when it comes to AI, the Qualcomm chip is quite far ahead in terms of operations per minute, but the Dimensity 1000 with its 4.5 trillion AI computations a minute, it, it, it isn't doing too bad for itself. Now, before we end this video, let's take a minute and talk about the ISPs or image signal processors. Now, this is something MediaTek is really proud of since they have a new 5-core ISP that can do nearly everything that the current-gen Snapdragon 855 can. We have support for cameras up to 80 megapixels. Not just that, we also have support for 4K 60fps video recording with HDR, uh, video noise uh, reduction, not to mention portrait mode for videos. So it's a pretty big leap in terms of what cameras can do and it puts it on par with this year's Snapdragon 855. Having said that, the 865 here, that's really pushing the envelope. It can capture 8K at 30 FPS, 4K at 120fps and the couple of seconds limitations for 960fps, that should no longer be an issue. Adding to all of this, we also have support up to 200 megapixels when it comes to cameras. Anyway, summing it all up, Qualcomm seems to have the lead overall. The Snapdragon 865 seems to be a beast of a chip. It's definitely, it seems to be the more powerful chip here, on paper at least. The Dimensity 1000 though, MediaTek seems to have a chip that feels to be a little above the Snapdragon 855. Again, on paper at least. Uh, at worst, it should be at least on par with the 855. But there is one area where MediaTek always dominates. And that is with price, price to performance if I can say. Now if the Dimensity 1000 is priced as aggressively as other MediaTek offerings, then we might start seeing it on premium mid-range phones and that would make it really interesting. Think about it, a mid-range phone, a premium mid-range phone with 4K 60fps or with a 120Hz uh, refresh rate display, that would be really awesome, right? We are already going to be seeing 120Hz on mid-rangers with a Redmi K30 and all that. Now, this is just going to make it even more common if this chip starts getting adopted. So what do you think? Would you be interested in buying a flagship or a flagship killer with a MediaTek flagship chip inside? What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. And with that, we get to the end of this video. Thumbs up, thumbs down based on whatever you felt about it. 
subscribe, turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon if you haven't yet. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.